Welcome back to Teresa's Garage. This is the midpoint in the show when I bring on that girl from Illinois, my co-host, Jeanette Desjardins. Welcome. Hey. Hey. Hey, How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good, man. It's a beautiful day. You know, I woke up today. It was raining. My car's broke. Oh, that's right. Your Pontiac broke down. That's right. Oh, no, I just can't catch a break. (laughs) So That sucks, doesn't it? It does, but um, with that all happening, I was able to uh, kind of play hooky at work today, skip the voting lines, go vote, and and uh, now then the sun came out, and it was a beautiful day. So. Hey, was there a rainbow? You know, I didn't see any rainbow through all these leaves that are blowing <laughs> over here. I mean, it's it's unreal. It looks like we have like five feet of snow, and it's just leaves. <laughs> hey, I, I sympathize <laughs> with you. Believe me, I rake them up, and the dogs lay in them. <laughs> they, think, they think it's their bed. <laughs> How's the pooch doing? I heard she, what happened. Yeah, she is starting to get her personality back. I mean, like I said, this morning she I let her out to just walk a little bit. Of course, she doesn't want to go too far on the property. She's probably still a little uh, gun shy, which reasonably so. And she started barking when the neighbor let her horse in the arena and then their dog out. She's. I'm like, look at your face. Is that a face that should be running the fence line? I don't think so. <laughs> She's a tough cookie, just like her mama. <laughs> yeah, she, so, you know, we just want to make sure that the infection doesn't set in. But anyway, thank you for asking. And, you know, we yeah. got we got a guest today. We've got an a, awesome guest today. She went to SEMA. She is uh, an expert uh, race driver in the dirt. Uh, she's quite of a rebel, but we'll let her talk about that. I want to welcome Shelby Hall to the show. Shelby, thank you for coming in. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. So... Tell us a little bit about um, who you are. I mean, just what you are into. Uh, Well, so I guess primarily I off-road race, which is a hobby that is slowly turning into a profession, which is amazing. I feel very fortunate. Oh, yeah. Not a lot of people can say that. No. Um, I've had a lot of help along the way, of course, from my grandfather, who is an off-road racing legend. Mm -hmm. Um, This year, actually, we're getting ready to go down to Baja for his 49th consecutive Baja 1000. Wow. Woo. Wow. That's exciting. Yes. That's a long time. That is. (laughs) That's kind of like me at the... uh, at my other career, 40 years, so I can, oh, I can sympathize yes. with Yes. <laughs> Rock on, Grandpa. Ac- yes. Absolutely. So you know what they say, gears in motion stay in motion. It's so. the truth. And so I feel like I have to keep doing it right so that he has something to you do. carry it's on like the family only name. Only fair. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, it, and it's a girl that's doing it. That's yes. even better. <laughs> and um, so other than that, I guess everything really in my life I do is uh, around the dirt. I... Uh, for work, I work in the dirt, and I play in the dirt, and I try to get as many people as I can to come and play in the dirt with me. But um, I am a, an, an event coordinator for um, Rod Hall Drive, okay, and that is a 4 by 4 platform, and we specialize in off-road driver training. Uh, we have a really um, great organization to be able to host product launches or... Um, test new products, and then we also specialize in corporate type events. Well, you know, there's a company, um, I'm trying to remember, I was I applied for a job there. They are a test company, and they're out in Silver Springs, and they actually get hired by manufacturers to test their products 24-7. So you're kind of doing the same thing uh, in a different atmosphere. I mean, yes. they have like over a thousand acres. They've got where they have something, uh, you know, rain, rains on yep. whatever it is for 24-7 until, you know, the period of time that it fails. So they actually can tell you, yeah, this lasts this long and this will go over the dirt and rocks and boulders for this long. And So you're, <laughs> you're, you're kind of doing the same we're, thing. We're doing the same thing, yes. That's what we do with our vehicles and our tires and Yourself. ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And all the, the cool parts and accessories that we get to put on our vehicles. Um, I know that our sponsors really appreciate being a, a part of our program because they do really get to test 
their products. Well, let's talk. Why don't you give them a shout out? I mean, who who is sponsoring Shelby Hall? Yeah, well, Hall Drive. Um, so I'm very excited. SEMA was really great for us, and we had a really good meeting. And we are really proud to say that AEV American Expedition Vehicles. Oh wow, is our newest sponsor. Right on. Nice. And Congrats. they thank you. They originally uh, sponsored me for my most recent competition, which was the Rebel Rally. And that was all women. And that was all women. And so that was really how the relationship started. And um, we put a two and a half inch lift kit on our stock Jeep Wrangler. And um, really the name of the game for us is to keep our vehicles as stock as possible, um, but to make them durable and just a little more capable. And so that's what this lift kit did for us. And it was just awesome oh, that, that we're really excited to put that same lift kit on our whole fleet of Jeeps. And so how many do you have? Jeanette, I'll give you a second here and you can ask your question. Uh, so we have four Jeep Wranglers and we have five Arctic Cat side-by-sides. Okay, go ahead, Jeanette. Oh, I was just sitting there like, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> but uh, what was your favorite part of SEMA? Uh, we're we're going to talk about that on the second half of the show. Oh, uh, a second segment. <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to, on this one, I, I want to kind of focus it on her her haul drive and, and that. So hold on to that thought. Um, but but you, you're involved in quite a few races. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, you, you know, let's talk about the last one you just did. You actually took fourth place. We did, yes. So the Rebel Rally was a seven-day navigational rally competition. Uh, it was women only, and there were about 36 teams. And there were only two different classes. There was a crossover class and then a 4 by 4 class. All the vehicles had to be street legal. They all had to have registration. So it was no race cars, uh, which was a totally <laughs> new thing for me. Yeah. I was like, whoa, we, we drive this down the road. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that, and that was really fun. The whole process of getting our vehicle ready was really fun. Um, I was very involved in that process, which, which normally with desert racing, I'm more on the logistics side. Okay. So to be more on the mechanical side with the Jeep that we competed in was a, a different world for me, but okay. really fun, long nights, um, <laughs> getting a lot dirty, of dirt, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, you know, a lot of curse words. Um, I, have no. a whole, I have a whole new respect for <laughs> Bad people <words>. who live <laughs> under the vehicles. I mean, that was um, an experience. You're talking about the mechanics. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> which your husband is. Which my husband is, and I kept telling him, oh, God, I just, I have a whole new respect for you. You don't have to come home and do the dishes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or That's clean. love right there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, so the, the really cool thing about this competition was there was no electronics, and we had no pit crew. So it was just you and your teammate and a map and a compass. Oh, wow. And. And so we had to plot and we had to find our checkpoints and really the name of the game was to accumulate the most points. Okay. So speed was not important. Oh good. Um, which is also a new thing for me. So it was all brain. Me. It was all brain all power. Brain. Okay. Lots of lots of math and lots of patience and um, lots of sticking to it. Seven so days now, is a long since time. your husband is your mate, uh -huh. do you guys still like each other? <laughs> we still love each other. Is she still out in the desert? No, yeah, no, she didn't. You know, <laughs> she didn't bring a shovel or anything like that. No, actually, so no, for the rally, that was sort of the goal. You know, at the beginning, is like let's just end being friends. Yeah, yeah. and we totally did. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. Well, you Amy, know, you both had the same focus, so that's yes, awesome. Amy Lerner, and she was the navigator, um, and she had a little bit of experience. She's competed in the gazelle rally okay. which is a similar type rally but in morocco okay oh wow yes and so she had competed in that four times but always as the driver so for her it was a new experience oh, wow. and uh, so we were very proud to take home fourth place yeah i would say how nice. many people were participating um so 36 teams so oh wow yeah that's awesome yeah. you have a question jeanette I w you just took the question right out of my <laughs> mouth. I was going to ask how many teams. Okay. So how, do they, how do they figure out the points? So I, I don't. I don't understand. 
Um, so basically, each day is its own leg, and okay. each checkpoint is worth a different amount of points. And there was green, blue, and black level checkpoints, green being the easiest, black being the hardest. And so that was part of the strategy for oh, each team. You had to figure out time management and which checkpoints you needed to hit for the day or you wanted to hit. And um, so at the oh. end of the day, you knew how many points you hit. We had tracking systems, and, and that was how it was calculated. So you could hit either one of the three. It just depends on what you were willing to get to that day in order to collect the points? Well, so for example, we'll just say that there are 15 checkpoints throughout the day, and they'd be all different levels. Right. So at the beginning of the day, you would say, okay, we want to hit... Um, all of the blues. Okay. So you'd have to hit the greens okay. and the blues. Okay. So it it was a lot of strategy. Wow. And where how did you meet your teammate? She is actually producing a documentary on my grandfather, Rod Hall. Oh wow. And so she's been tagging along for the past nine months on all the events that we go to and the races that we're competing in and Wow. Um we actually Rod is really the one who was calling me and saying, gosh, you know, you should really team up with Amy. And he was calling Amy and saying, you know, you, you should, should really team, team up with Shelby. <laughs> so, He's playing the middle. Yes, right? he was the matchmaker. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is cool. You know, we're, we're heading into our uh, last commercial break, and when we come back, you know, I want you, when we first come back, I want you to explain how people can get a hold of you. Okay. And if they want to participate or be part of what you're doing, that would be awesome. We'll give you that opportunity. And uh, come, so when we come back, we're going to talk uh, more with Shelby Hall uh, and about her adventure in SEMA and I know Jeanette's got lots of questions and so do I because we want to hear how the Chinese uh, booths got raided over there. Um, <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I know, right? And their patent infringement, so don't go away. Teresa's Garage will be right back. Welcome back to Teresa's Garage. We are a production of America Matters Media right here at 1180 AM KCKQ, coming to you live from the Reno Town Mall. We've been talking with my featured guest, uh, Shelby Hall, and of course, my co-host, Jeanette Desjardins from Chicago, and she is the queen of car chicks. And before we went to commercial, uh, we were talking with uh, Shelby Hall about... Um, her new haul drive and Shelby tell everybody how they can get a hold of you and if they want to participate yeah you can go to our website which is rod rod hall drive at uh, sorry just rod hall drive dot <laughs> com <laughs> or um, you can follow us on Facebook rod hall drive you can follow me as I'm racing and our team at rod hall racing on Facebook or you can follow me personally and that is Shelby Hall Baker. Got to give that husband's last name a, a shake in there. I mean, I offered that he could take Hall, but... You know, I did the same thing to my husband. I did not take his name at all. I'm and trying to convince mine right now, too. <laughs> okay, it's not let's working. do it. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I told my husband. I know he's listening. I told my husband, I said, well, you could take my name, but I'm not taking yours. So there you have it. I mean, I've been known... Same with you. I mean, all three of us are so well known by our you know, birth yes. name, that if we change it, people are like, who is that? that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who is yeah. that? <laughs> and I try to sell it to him, like, come on, it's French. You could be like Jean-Claude Van Damme. Ooh. And he's like, no, he's not going for it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, not that easy. I've heard some men have done it, but yeah, very few. Yes. Anyway, Jeanette, we are going to talk about SEMA because she, uh, Shelby, See, actually oh, participated at SEMA. So why don't you take it off? Shelby. Yes. What was your favorite, if you had to pick one thing about SEMA that was the absolute favorite part of the show besides open bar or <laughs> any gambling, what would it be? Oh, geez. Um, SEMA is always so overwhelming, and I, I get pretty lucky every time we go. We have something to do with the show, so we're always there um, on Monday, which is the setup day, which is pretty cool. Um, but I would say, so something that was a common thing happening this year was the virtual reality experiences where you have like a headset, a headset yeah. and you're experiencing either snowmobiling yeah. or cool. whatever it is. Cool. And I felt like that was a, a pretty cool addition. It, it brought a lot of attention. 
Um, so between that and then I always love going into um, the big car manufacturers. They have their concept cars and um, cars that they may be just made for the show. Okay. And they're just so cool to see and so futuristic. And Do they have any of the engineers there? Talking about how they design the cars at all? You know, not that I'm aware of. There okay. might be, but I have not met them. I have not been to <laughs> SEMA. Jeanette and I have talked about that. We've got to go. Got it's, to go. It's insane. And it being four days long is not long enough. Yeah, no. <laughs> if you were able to walk the whole show, it's something like 47 miles. Oh, my God. It's kind of like going to the uh, uh, the the archives uh, over in the Smithsonian. Yes. Uh, you know, a week is not enough. No. So Same you, with SEMA. You got to make your game plan. Oh, you sure. really have to make your game plan. And I mean, this is probably isn't surprising, but <laughs> I usually stay in the South Hall, which is the off-road section. Of course. And shocker. Yeah. yeah it's shocking. Why should I you know. be on road, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I usually stay outside where they have a lot of the, the cars in action. Yeah, don't they? Because yeah, a lot of these shows, yeah, the drifting. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of the, sh the the TV shows are actually out there. Oh, yeah. You know, like Foos is there yep. and, and so many of these mm -hmm. other bitchin' rides. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, so they're out what there. What kind of rides? Bitchin'. <laughs> you know where that came from, don't you? American Graffiti. When she, when, when, uh, when she said, wow, Toad, that's a bitchin' ride on that 58 Impala. You do that so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was in the movie. I oh. got it firsthand. American Graffiti was filmed in uh, my hometown. Wow. Yep. Were you really in the movie? I'm serious, yes. Really? Yes. I'm going to have to rewatch it. Yeah. <laughs> We're in the dance scene. You can barely see us. Our, one of our girlfriends was actually standing there with Richard Dreyfus and the school teacher. When, he's talk, when Richard Dreyfus goes over and talks to the school teacher, the girl with the long uh, brown hair, that's one of our friends. And then when he's do, walking up the hall where the lockers are, and that, that's exactly our hallway, and my locker was like six down from where he was, and... He was kind You're of dancing. <laughs> I love to dance. Oh, jeez! Wow. I'm a music queen. What do you think? I rebuild all these jukeboxes and crank uh, phonographs and radios. I love that stuff. Awesome! I'm and, definitely going to have to rewatch it now and look for you. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so Shelby, tell us, um, you know what your displays were there at SEMA. So we were actually part of the BF Goodrich display, okay. which was inside the SCORE Experience display. And uh, SCORE is the racing association that has the Baja 1000, the Baja 500, um, so all the, the races down in Mexico. Oh, okay. And, and you've been in that race. Uh, I have. Yeah. Yep. This will be my fifth year actually competing in the Baja 1000. Okay. So uh, so we had uh, Rod Hall's Baja Bronco on display, and it is the only four-wheel drive vehicle that has ever overalled the Baja 1000. Wow. Yeah, so it's a, an iconic vehicle that sure. we still race. A few years ago, we pulled it out of a museum, the Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame. And uh, did you notice it was a Ford, Jeanette? <laughs> I'm, I'm smiling from here to here. <laughs> I, 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 I thought you were. I thought I could feel that from here. Uh, go ahead. Um, but my they husband restored it. it and um, the last two years, we've been racing this Bronco down in Mexico um, as part of a, a vintage rally. Okay. Um, but so that thing is awesome. What year is the Bronco? It's a 68. Wow. Okay. Wow. It is sweet. I bet it I is. I love that thing. Oh, God. I remember when, you're, uh, when I was the fleet manager over at Hertz Rent-A-Car, he used to rent a bunch of yes. Jeeps and put different tires on it. And, yeah, because we used yep. to have to rent them to him. And then he would, like, six of them, I think. And he would take them out and then bring them back. Yep. And, yeah. Yep, those uh, were the good old days. Yeah, we those. were uh, at that time. We were doing tire seminars for BF Goodrich. Oh, is that what it was? So, okay, I, yep. I I don't remember exactly what you guys were doing. I just know we were renting the jeeps to you. They're playing in the dirt. Yeah, same <laughs> thing. Same did thing. Did you play in that the we're dirt? doing now? Right? Did you play in the dirt when you were a kid? Oh yes. Oh okay. Yeah. Well, oh yeah. It's not new to you. <laughs> <laughs> um. So so that was a really cool thing. Um. BF Goodrich is celebrating 40 years of the radial tire. The, oh. And so Ooh. it was the BFG. The BFG. Okay. Okay. Yep, the radial. And so, um, and that was a, also a very iconic tire. It was the first tire that was made to go off-road and on-road. Wow, I have those on my truck. 
I Very love good. I love those. Yeah, they're BFGs. Thank you. We approve. Yeah. <laughs> we love those. And we have it. radios, but they're Mickey Thompson. So. Oh, <laughs> I mean, uh, that's cool have, too. That's, that's kind of like Ford and Chevy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Thompson. They had a big, um, like, new logo unveiling, and uh, from what I saw in some live feeds, so that was kind of cool. Yeah, there are so many things that go on at SEMA. There's no way to see it all. You, and and then the chi you 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 heard about the Chinese I getting did. raided. Yeah, I, yeah, and I'm just disappointed I missed that. <laughs> well, you were outside so playing in the dirt. Yeah. What do you expect? <laughs> so what happened? I, I mean, I thought it was a joke. I saw these pictures, like memes on Facebook, and I was like, oh, you know, real funny, haha. -ha. But that was real? Yeah, it was real. <laughs> yes, they were actually doing patent <laughs> infringements. And the, the, P, the manufacturer happened to be walking by the booths and saw that they were you know, try, took their their patent and made knockoffs just like theirs. And so they went to the court uh, and got an injunction uh, on um, Tuesday. And they raided uh, those booths. And then Wednesday they came back and did it again. So a couple I others. Mean, didn't anybody, like, do any research about what SEMA actually is? <laughs> like, you didn't think that those manufacturers were going to be there? I wonder if it was a language barrier. Oh, heavens. I mean, Jeep. I mean, what do you... Yeah, Jeep and it's Jeep, huge. Right? I mean, there's so many Jeeps. I mean, we're talking, you know, Shelby, that's what, you know, they're out doing. They're they're running Jeeps. Go ahead, Craig. As I say, it's like those bad uh, translations of uh, instruction manuals. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, what page is mine? Where's English? Where's English? <laughs> yeah, you got to turn the book upside down, <laughs> go sideways. Yeah, I, yeah it, it's crazy. I mean, why would you come to a show that is manufacturer intensive and you know that you've infringed on somebody's patent and you're going to sell it right in front of them? Do you think they are just right. going to turn a blind eye? Well, and then the other thing, I mean, I've, you know, uh, it's trade show season now for car chicks, and like every application that we send in to get our boot space, they ask, what are you going to sell? And sometimes they have us check a box not to, that we can't sell anything with like a brand name like Chevy, Jeep, sure. Ford. Sure. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm, I kind of would wonder what exactly the application process was. And why it kind of got overlooked, but you know, well, and, and she, tons of vendors, right? Well, exactly. And she'll be said, and I'll let her uh, explain. It's expensive to have a booth. Oh yeah, I mean, I would say for like a ten by fifteen space booth, it's like twenty thousand wow. dollars. So, and that's just for the booth space. That is not including yeah. any electrical. Of the setup. Yeah, right. absolutely. And I, I mean the the booth setups that people have are just incredible i mean it's they're like homes you know they're yeah. like these custom <laughs> homes i best top was there and they had like a camping setup area and they had a a, a fireplace in the middle and um logs to sit they on want around you the to fire. have the atmosphere yes. of what it's all about and yes that's, wow. yeah and that's pretty cool uh wow and you were there for the four days Oh yeah, we were there for the whole week. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you got to get there, you got to set up. Right. That's a day in itself. Yes. And then, don't you have to pay for like if you need the forklift? They charge you. Oh, forklift. absolutely. Yeah. Every you pay for everything. I mean, there's nothing that you get for free. No, you, and you have, take a number to come in. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can um, hire like a vacuum service, and it's like twenty four hundred dollars oh. to have your your carpet vacuum for four oh, days oh my god that, the unions are strong down there <laughs> i'm not going down there anyway we are at the end of the show and shelby thank you for being here quite the experience thank we are going to so have much. you back you always have a lot of great things to, to talk about jeanette always a pleasure as my co-host absolutely we'll be back next week for another hour of Teresa's garage and automotive talk if you didn't go out and vote make sure you do it's an important day for everybody. So drive safely out there and please, happy motoring. <laughs>